Hey now. Um, Hi. Who are you? Aiden. What are we doing? What are we doing? Um, Driving to school? Yeah. And we're going to shoot a video. About? They can't hear you. Um, you don't remember? No. We're going to do a video uh, talking about our weightlifting club. Our weightlifting program. You remember we talked about that? Yeah. Cool. So <clears throat> when we were preparing for uh, going to AO finals in Utah just a couple weeks ago, I had some conversations with some people at the gym and uh, two buddies of mine that have their own weightlifting programs uh, outside of South Florida. They are just asking me questions about the history of our weightlifting club and how we started and the reason why um, it was important for us to have a weightlifting club and just kind of how that whole thing evolved and worked. Um, and through those conversations, uh, a, a couple things came to light and like, you know, some of my opinions on things we were, we were discussing, um, you know, and, and in the history of the more recent history of South Florida Olympic weightlifting and weightlifting clubs, um, you know, there, there honestly has not really been a, a whole lot of strong clubs that have stayed around and like stood the test of time, so to speak. And mind you, as I'm saying that we've only been around for 10 years, we're not OGs in that game at all. Uh, if you consider nationally and definitely not on the world level. However, in South Florida, um, we, I believe, were the second club ever, uh, sorry, not South Florida, in, in Miami, first being Team Miami-Dade, which was ran out of a gentleman named Art's uh, garage. Um, Art now lifts with us when he does lift. We've had the honor of coaching him at several meets, um, and he's kind of been a fixture in our program for a long time. He's always been in and out of our gym, um, but... Besides him, who was doing it very much as a hobby, we're the first, as, as far as I know, official weightlifting club in Miami. Come on, dude. Let me do this video. Sorry. So, um, you know, the, the, the story and kind of how the whole thing evolved was uh, <clears throat> when we opened, or actually prior to us opening, Olympic weightlifting was, something, was always something that fascinated me, and this is prior to me wanting to coach it or coaching it or competing or anything at all. Um, it was, it's obviously a huge piece to the CrossFit puzzle. And that was when I was introduced to the lifts, um, they were things that I just automatically gravitated towards. I felt like I understood them better than the other people that I was working with or being taught CrossFit by. And there were not a lot of resources in Miami or South Florida at all to learn from. So I and kind of the crew that I was with, we kind of took it upon ourselves to travel outside of South Florida and to meet people like Danny Camargo in, in Orlando, um, some people in Jacksonville, definitely people in California. Most importantly, the Bergners really framed a lot of my coaching and and knowledge in regards to the sport of weightlifting. And we kind of just sought help from other uh, resources because there were not a whole lot readily available to us here in South Florida. And it took a lot of time, it took a lot of money, it took a lot of travel. However, through doing that is, is how we kind of framed what we now have today, which is you know what we call Team Soul Weightlifting. Again, it, it kind of just started out of necessity because it just didn't exist down here. Our weightlifting club, um, prior to even having like a formal coach, was just uh, when Seoul opened, it was myself and like three or four other people just weightlifting. We just wanted to train and we needed a place to train. Um, so we put down one platform um, and we had, you know, uh, some equipment that was donated to us. And at the end of the day, after the CrossFit classes at Seoul were done, again, at this time we had 20 clients or something, um, a group of us would just come around and train at night. Um, 
And at the very beginning, we were, we were uncoached. It was just like a group of people that were listening because there was that necessity. Um, very soon thereafter, a gentleman named Camilo Garcia found us. <laughs> a gentleman named, named Camilo Garcia found us. Uh, I don't even know how, man. I think his brother like Googled weightlifting club in Miami and he was a um, higher level uh, Olympic coach from Cuba who was here for a couple years and he was not coaching and he was out of the weightlifting game and he found us and he came over and it was one of the first times that I actually like opened the door to someone like that from the outside and, 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 and brought them into what we had going on and it was one of the best decisions I ever made because I had been coached by many people remotely. I'd taken many seminars, um, I have tra- had trained you know, at gyms on the West Coast and um, in the Northeast, and I had been around uh, well-known weightlifting coaches and clubs. However, as far as having like that one-on-one relationship with someone and um, learning about their history in the sport of weightlifting and how they became, um, how they kind of built their own knowledge really helped us tremendously. And that's when things really changed for us. So I do credit a lot that I know to that man, uh, Camilo Garcia. And, um, you know, in, in those days and for a very long time, um, weightlifting was a complete loss for us. So like, if you looked at it from a business perspective for the first, you know, six, seven years, we had a club, it was just a money pit. It was hemorrhaging money. It was, uh, we were, uh, we were buying gear, we were traveling to meets, we were um, investing money in the club, we were paying Camilo well for to come and coach our club, to coach me, to coach everybody. And, you know, even at the time, at the very beginning, we had to like beg for people's attention. And for the very few weightlifters that were in Miami, we had to beg for them to come train with us because it, uh, it was being done in a CrossFit gym. And in those days, you know, even though, now like weightlifting and CrossFit kind of go hand in hand they were very much opposed and um you know weightlifters kind of looked at CrossFit as kind of like they came and they bastardized the movements and the exercises that they were so passionate about and the reason why I think that's such an important point is because you know now when I talk to guys that own their own weightlifting club or they want to launch their own weightlifting club a lot of times especially in South Florida they'll be around for a year or two I'll talk to these guys and be like, what happened? And the feedback is often, man, it just wasn't making money. I couldn't like continue pouring and dedicating myself to something that was not paying the bottom line. And while I get that, that's kind of the name of the game in regards to the sport of weightlifting. I don't like implore anybody to make decisions that are going to put them at financial risk or be unhealthy potentially for their own family. However, Um, That is very much the reality of the sport of weightlifting. It was years and years and years of loss. And for us, man, it was just something that we've been very, very passionate about. We also wanted to stand out and do something that gyms in South Florida were not participating in. Again, especially Miami. (laughs) Um, So, um, you know, that's kind of how the whole thing grew. And And then, you know, you throw MIA Classic into the mix And in regards to MIA Classic, again, why did MIA Classic start? It was just due to necessity because there was nowhere to compete in South Florida. There was no local meets. The only thing that was happening anywhere near down here was like the Sunshine State Games. Um, And uh, it grew, uh, we started with it just because we had to, because there was no other option and we didn't want to compete or we want to continue traveling to Orlando or Tampa or Bradenton or Jacksonville to compete at weightlifting meets. So we decided we're going to put our flag down and we were the first, we're the first dudes to have a weightlifting meet. So I guess like in summary, um, it's all just been due to necessity because it wasn't happening around us. So we kind of like carved out our own lane and it's been years and years and years of just hard work and, um, you know, establishing something because it's something that, that we're passionate about. There's really nothing more than we'd want to do than to throw ourselves into something that, that we love. Right, dude? Am yeah. I talking with my hands too much? No, I'm No? Okay. Well, we're done. Can you say bye?
Bye-bye. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.